Hey guys, this episode we're going to be taking a look at the new trusted publishing on rubygems.org. This allows you to use GitHub Actions, for example, to release new versions of your gem so you can automate that and you don't have to log in with your username and password and go through MFA. Um, of course, because on CI, like GitHub Actions, you cannot type into that console or script that's running. Um, and then also this uses OpenID Connect, which will give you short-lived API tokens to do the publishing uh, securely. So this means you don't have to have an API token that lives for a long time, that you put into your GitHub secrets that could get lost. Uh, these are very short-lived tokens that are used for publishing. So there's an announcement, you can read more about it, and in the guides there's a trusted publishing guide, but I wanna walk through setting this up with you on a gem that I run called Simple Calendar. It hasn't had a release uh, in over a year. It doesn't really need, uh, maybe not over a year, but close. Um, August will be here before we know it. But I wanted to record this and just cut a release of this just to show you how this works so we can automate it. So first step is to find the gem on Ruby Gems and then go down to Trusted Publishers as long as you're logged in as one of the owners. Then you can go and create a trusted publisher for it. And you will say, I wanna use GitHub Actions, that's the only supported one right now, and where the repository lives under the owner, the repository name, and then inside the repository, it will look for a GitHub workflow file. So I'm gonna call this one uh, Publish Gem YML, and then we will create this RubyGem Trusted Publisher. You can also set up an environment if you have need for that. We just are going to deploy this without um, because it's basically all the same environment production um, when we release this. So um, from there, we need to go into our Git repository and set up a GitHub action in this .github folder. Now, if we go down to publishing a new gem, you can read through the steps that we just walked through for adding all of that uh, there. And then we need to create a um, GitHub action YAML file which we can copy from the guides that will use a release gem GitHub action that Ruby Gems themselves maintains that does all of these steps for you. So you don't really have to do anything, you just have to copy paste this into your GitHub repository. All right. uh, so then let me open up VS Code here. Under .github workflows, uh, next to our CI that we have, we are going to add a new file in this directory and we'll call it publish gem YML. So it matches the file name that we grabbed before. This will have one job in it called push that runs on the Ubuntu latest image. It has permissions of uh, write contents, write ID token. Um, if you configured a GitHub environment, you can use this. You can also leave that out, I believe. And then this is gonna check out the repository install Ruby, and then it will run this Ruby gems release gem script uh, from there. So then we can set up this to be triggered any way we would like. So we can have it triggered automatically after CI runs. We're gonna usually need to bump the version of our gem. So I'm actually gonna make this uh, workflow dispatch event is when it will run, which is actually going to give us a button on GitHub's UI. So we can just click that. And then we can set a name for this and we can say like publish gem. Um, and that is it. So if we go over to our git uh, config here, we can queue up the publish gem YML, add trusted publishing to with GitHub actions. And we could say to Ruby gems if we wanted to, to rubygems.org and commit this. And then um, we can make sure that that gets pushed up as well. So we can push that to our repository. If we refresh our page here, we should see that new commit. And then under actions, we now have this publish gem workflow. So we can click run workflow, tell it what branch we want to run or what tag we would like it to run. And then we can publish our gem. Now we're gonna to need to actually bump the version of our gem in order to uh, successfully publish a new release. So we can either write a script for that or we can go back into our terminal and just run that command 
uh, right now because I don't have a script for updating this. But if we go into the lib simple calendar folder and go to version.rb, we can bump that release number to 3.03. We can also check uh, our gem and see the current version, 3.02. So that would be the next uh, patch version. I'm not deploying any new features or any breaking changes. So I'm just going to release this as 3.03, basically with zero changes. Um, if we we're doing a major release, 4.0 uh, could be a good um, update. Or if we were adding new features, 3.1.0 might be what we want. But we will update this. Then we need to run bundle. And we're also using a library called appraisal. So we will run that so it can run the test against uh, Rails 7, 7, 1, 7 2, or whatever's in main, uh, Rails 6, 1, whatever we want to have compatibility with, we can have it run against those versions. So this is going to update our gem file.locks with this new version so that when the tests run, um, they will run successfully. And then we eventually could have this set up so that CI can run. And if it detects there's a new version in that release, um, that it could automatically trigger the publish gem after CI passes. What we're going to do is just run this automatically or run this manually. And we will automate that later on, probably not in the screencast. But I want to show you once we've set all of this up, we can add these file changes. So it will just be a handful of version number bumps there. And we can commit that and say uh, version bump and run git push to push that up to GitHub. And that will trigger our CI to run on the version bump. And then we should wait until this is finished. And then once all of these are green, we can go over to the other page and publish our Ruby gem with a click of a button. As you can see, our tests have passed. We have a green check mark and we can go over to publish gem, click run workflow on the main branch. Um, and we could also have told it to use specifically that 3.03 tag um, if we had pushed that up. So we didn't tag that release ourselves, but I think this um, will do it for us automatically. So we can click on this, click on push and you will see the steps that it's running through. It's installing all of our gems uh, and installing that Ruby version, and then it's going to run that release gem um, task. So here it goes. This is going to then um, tag version 3.03. .03. It's gonna push the tag up and push it to Ruby gems as well. So it gives us all this information about what it's doing behind the scenes to release this gem. Um, and it's also going to be able to interact with our GitHub repository because it has uh, a key from GitHub. So it's got permissions to execute against our um, repository. So that'll be pretty cool to check out too because if we go over to code and we go to here, tags, we now have version 3.03 .03 as a tag um, in our repository, which is awesome. So this is automated with our script here. Our push is finished, it is green, and if we go refresh rubygems.org, 3.03 .03 has been released today. Uh, this is not an April Fool's joke, even though I recorded this on April 1st. Um, but yeah, we didn't have to install any uh, tokens or anything like that in our GitHub secrets. Everything is done using that release gem uh, script. So everything that happened here was automatic. So this is pretty cool. We just have to click that one button and we can release a new version of our gem. We don't have to log in or do any of that stuff because it's automa automated between GitHub and Ruby gems. And because they're using that OpenID connect between them, it is able to do that seamlessly without knowing our credentials or anything else because it trusts and knows for sure that it came from our GitHub action, which is really cool. So it's not fully automated because we still need to choose what sort of release and what version we want to choose. We need to know if it's a bug fix version release, a minor version or a major version, and then make that version bump. And then we can trigger that. Um, but I'm sure there's awesome creative ways of, of setting that up. Um, instead of just having that on work workflow dispatch that we did here, uh, to enable this trigger from the UI. Uh, maybe you want to set it up to run automatically whenever you see a commit named version bump. 
that would work probably pretty well. You could have your commit done, make those updates, and then push it up, and then CI could run and see uh, if CI passed, why don't we run the publish gem um, step afterwards and automate that check. I'm sure that's doable. Uh, and maybe if you'd like to see that in the future, let me know and we could do a follow-up screencast on that. But for now, this is going to get me 90% of the way there. I don't have to worry about being logged in on my iPad or my phone if I need to do a release. Um, but also this is just a convenient way of doing that as well. I don't have to worry about the multi-factor authentication or any of that stuff. And if you want to learn more about how that actually is implemented, um, this is uh, the blog post explaining the backstory, how this stuff works, uh, the benefits and so on. And then you can even read through the source code on this um, or talk with the team um, about how it works because they have been doing some great work on this as well. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.